In this lesson, we're going to talk about PVC piping. PVC is polyvinyl chloride. It's um, a plastic product and it is in use all over the world and probably the vast majority of all uh, water piping and sewage or drainage systems is made with polyvinyl chloride or PVC. We'll talk later in another lesson about CPVC, chlorinated PVC, but that's a different animal. But here we're going to be talking about your basic PVC. What I'm holding is a one inch piece of pipe and you can get this basically from half inch all the way up to I think you know six inches or even more and generally when you get into larger sizes than that um, you may get into a slightly different product than just your basic PVC. I don't really work with that sizes and generally an irrigation technician won't unless you deal with a lot of agriculture or very large systems and in that case you're probably going to need more more education than what this level of classes is imparting to you. So this is the fundamentals and then you can go on to more complicated knowledge, but as long as you have these basics in check, you're going to be okay. So let's talk about the different kinds of PVC that we have. What I'm holding is a, a thin wall. It's just called a thin walled irrigation pipe, but this is class 200. The class uh, in the, um, the 200 refers to the the pressure rating of this, this has a maximum operating pressure of 200 PSI. And so uh, a lot of these pipes will have what's called an SDR rating. And SDR stands for standard dimension ratio. And that means no matter what size of pipe that you get, um, that's class rated. We have class 160, class 200, class 315. All of these will have the very same maximum operating pressure no matter what size pipe you use. So on the design end, that makes it a lot simpler for the guys that are uh, putting these plans together and calculating everything out versus, let's take a look here at what's called Schedule 40, and that's different. It's not SDR. It's its own kind of category, and the thickness, it has a very thick wall but the size, the thickness of the wall stays the same across the different sizes of pipe. So the larger pipe that you get, the less maximum operating pressure that you're going to be able to have in that pipe here. But with a uh, Schedule 40, you do get the, the thicker pipe. It carries less water than the Class 200 counterpart of the same size, but we'll take a look in just a second here on the, the maximum flow rates. Um, one of the things that you also that you may encounter is a Schedule 80. Um, usually Schedule 80 you won't ever see in an irrigation system. It's gray colored, maybe slightly thicker wall than this, but about the same size. Um, the fittings, the Class 80 fittings are a little bit thicker and better to use, but normally what you'll see out there is Class 40 fit, excuse me, Schedule 40 fittings and um, Class 200 pipe on a irrigation system. I've got a picture here. Hopefully this close-up will show you the difference between the uh, the sizes of the wall thickness and so forth. So what we're going to do here, um, just real quickly go through our fill in the blanks and let's talk about what the maximum flow rate is. On the um, Class 200 pipe, a half inch piece of pipe will actually be a Class 315. As far as I know, there aren't any half inch Class 200, but it'll be in the same area, no matter who you're buying your parts from, they'll have some half inch there and it'll be Class 315, which means that it has a 315 PSI maximum operating range. And so what you get for that is five gallons per minute. Okay, you can get more than that, but that's the maximum rating at the speed, the velocity at which we want water to stay at with PVC pipe. No matter what type of plastic pipe that you're dealing with, no matter what class or schedule, five feet per second is the maximum velocity or the speed that we want water going through this pipe. When we deal with some other types of pipe, for instance, copper has a seven feet per second limit on it. But when we talk here about the maximum flow rates, later on in the course, we're going to look at friction loss charts and we'll see the reason behind what we call the maximum flow rates. It's not the maximum amount that the pipe can carry, but it's the maximum amount before friction loss or the turbulence and uh, the loss of pressure inside the pipe because of the water traveling through the pipe 
We want to keep that at a certain frequency or the certain speed, and then the, the faster it gets exponentially, the rate of friction loss starts to increase. So when we go through those friction loss settings or the, the friction loss charts and all of the values that we we'll want to use on there, you'll understand more clearly what we're talking about when we talk about the maximum uh, velocity and the maximum flow rates per pipe. So the half inch, we're going to have a five gallon per minute limit on that. If we go up to three quarter inch pipe, 10 gallons per minute is going to be our limit there. And then when we get to one inch, 16 gallons per minute is our limit there. So, but now let's talk about the schedule 40 and go through the fill-ins on the schedule 40. For one half inch pipe, we're going to have four gallons per minute as our limit. For three quarter inch pipe, we're going to have seven gallons per minute as our limit. And then one inch pipe is going to give us a, a maximum flow rate of 12 gallons per minute safely. Um, like I said, we can get more than that through these pipes, but you do it at the expense of pressure. So uh, those are the fill-ins. And um, let's talk about the different ways that we can cut PVC and deal with it. There's a number of different things that are out there. What I carry <clears throat> on the truck is just a simple pair of pipe cutters. They'll, these will cut up to one inch of any type, class 200 or schedule 40, but the schedule 40, you wouldn't think that, think that plastic really dulls blades down, but that schedule 40 is pretty thick and it'll wear these blades down pretty quickly. That's why these blades are replaceable. But um, one thing to keep in mind here, you know, when you go to cut PVC is don't think that you're an incredible Hulk and you're just going to cut right through this thing. And there are some other cutters out there that use levers and just one continuous push to cut that blade all the way through. I don't like those. I've owned a couple of pair of those in the past. And what you end up doing is shattering the pipe and causing breaks laterally down the pipe here. What I like are, are these type of cutters. And even as they get a little duller, it still allows you to feel with your hands what the pressure is so that when you go to cut it, it's not, you're not crushing it. This pipe does get cold on, you know, cold mornings on winter days and it'll shatter if it gets too cold. I generally try not to deal with PVC when it's any less than about 38 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. When you get closer to the freezing point or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, stuff becomes pretty brittle and tough to work with. But let's say that we're going to go and make a cut. As you push in, don't give it all of your strength at once and kind of work the pipe back and forth and cut in as you go. And that'll result in a nice, smooth lip to your cut. Um, if you end up, you know, cutting out of round and leave a little lip there, it's okay to take your blade and just cut that little bit off of here, but I've made a pretty easy cut here, pretty clean cut. So really what we need to do, and usually with the type of cutters like this, is it's going to end up putting just a tiniest bit of lip on the pipe here. And with one inch pipe, it's not that big of a deal. And if you're just making fittings straight on, um, you know, one after the other, it's probably not that big of a deal if you don't bevel the edges on this um, or tr trim the, uh, the corners off. But if you're making a repair, and let's say that, that you've got this pipe bent back, and we're doing it old style here, and we're just going to use a simple coupling on this, and as we put this together and we're forcing it down, this edge here may actually scrape away part of the PVC on the inside of our fitting here. Um, when we talk about the solvent selection and, and talk about the primer, we'll see how that primer softens this up, but it'll still tear pieces away here so it's not like that edge really softens up much. So what we want to use is a deburr. This here is a, a deburr. It's also got a reamer, but chances are you're never going to need to ream your pipes out, but we may want to bevel that edge. So it has little blades on the inside there, and when you put this thing in and kind of grind that edge off, it'll leave you with a little burr there. Now always, always, always get any of the trimmings, the little pieces of plastic here, always keep rags on the truck and make sure that you get that a um, uh, little bit of uh, 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 PVC that grinds off of there, those little particles, I guess is the best way to uh, explain it. And make sure that you get them all out of the pipe and off of the fitting here and that none is inside your, your fitting and on the outside of the pipe. 
But this is for class 200, and it's relatively easy to do that. But um, let's talk about the Schedule 40. When we get to a larger thickness of pipe, it makes it tough to get into the fitting, especially in a repair situation where you're trying to pull two pipes together to, to pop into an elbow or some similar situation, this edge may hurt you or, or make it very difficult to get it to slide into the fitting. And the larger sizes that you get, it gets harder to grip and harder to pull these things together. And actually the glue will put a little bit of pressure on there for it to push back out of the socket. So what we want to do, our deburr here, it's, it goes up to one and a quarter inch, and this is one and a quarter inch pipe, but it doesn't really do that great of a job on the outside with this. So what I keep on the truck basically is a wood file, okay? And um, I use that almost always on any size, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch are probably the worst. But um, what I do is just take it and put a good, you know, 45 degree bevel on that, work that edge off, and then always take your rag and make sure that you wipe off the debris or the little particles of plastic that are happening there because that can compromise your um, joint as you're putting two pieces together here. A little bit of particle there could possibly cause some water to get through. So we want this to be as clean as possible so we always kind of wipe up around it. Now, there are other ways to cut PVC. Okay, excuse me for a second here, and let me bend, bend down, and we're going to talk about a couple of things. I always keep a hacksaw on the truck. This one here is configurable. This handle will flip around, and it turns into more of an angular type of deal. Uh, but there's also other hacksaws that you can get that have blades specifically for PVC. And those are pretty awesome. Um, I don't currently have one on the truck, but um, I usually keep one coming or going somewhere. And when you get down into some really tight situations in a repair job, this big boy here may be too large for you to get in there. Like I said, it, it angles in, in, into a, a sharp point here, but it still may not be enough. So we want a lot of different ways to be able to cut our PVC. There's several different options available to us. One thing I always keep on the truck is a reciprocating saw. Sometimes they're called by one of the brand names, Sawzall, which just means that it'll cut through anything. But um, this is a battery operated one. And um, what it does is it have a blade that goes back and forth. And um, that's the reciprocating blade part of it. And this is just a, a standard all purpose blade, but you can get blades for this and for your hacksaw that'll take care of steel and copper and things like that. So you'll always have a way to cut your pipes. But um, I always uh, keep this around for cutting inch and a half and two inch pipes. It just really uh, makes things go pretty quick. But make no uh, doubt about it that when you cut pipe with these kind of blades, it's going to leave a lot of particles and so forth that you're going to need to clean up. Let's take a look here and make a quick cut on this. If you can see, there's all kinds of little uh, plastic particles that go everywhere. So make sure that you clean this stuff up and, um, and make for a good clean weld when you're gluing your joints together. Now, there's some other things out there. Um, there you can get a little device that's just a basically a, a piece of a piano wire looking deal with two handles on the end and that one's good for fishing down into tight spaces and you can cut your PVC like that. So um, there are a number of different options available to you but I really like these cutters here, replaceable blades and so forth. So and just you know talking about some of the different uh, differences between the class 200 and the schedule 40 these things are going to react in different ways to different situations. Let's take a look at one here. This is a piece of class 200 pipe that Roots had been pushing on for years. Uh, and I would say that at least uh, th this was here before it broke in this way for, gosh, maybe seven or eight years because by the time I got to it, um, and I had uh, dealt with this system for two years before this pipe ever burst. We didn't know about this situation, but the the um, the roots had pushed this together. Now, this is the class 200, and that's the reason that it kind of bent up this way. If this was schedule 40, it would have just broken from the very beginning when the, the pressure of that root 
was put on it, or maybe the root would have grown around it. But I just kind of want to bring this to your attention to show you that these pipes react in different ways to different circumstances. So um, don't automatically think, well, oh, I'll prevent that by putting Schedule 40 in the ground. Well, Schedule 40 pipe is quite a bit more expensive than the Class 200. And if it's specified and you've got everything properly calculated out for your flow rates and your customer's happy to pay for the difference in pipe, then by all means go for it uh, because the, the Class 40 will withstand a, you know, a hit from a shovel or something like that a lot better than this Class 200 will. But if this had been Class, um, if this had been Schedule 40 in the ground, the pipe would have broken years ago. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm just saying that these things do happen differently. So don't be surprised when you dig stuff up in the ground. Um, it can be kind of amazing at times how this plastic pipe can withstand different conditions. So uh, as we look at these different uh, styles of PVC pipe here, make sure that you have your techniques you know, together for the different types. You'll deal with class 200 or the thin wall pipe a little differently than you deal with the schedule 40, but not much differently.